welcome back to Killer Stories. I'm your host, Bobby Holmes. Those of you watching on YouTube can see that I went all out for the zombie theme, but it's the week of Halloween, and I can't miss an opportunity to wear a costume. But before you start with the comments about how insensitive I am for dressing up as a zombie given the context of this story, it's Halloween. Take a chill pill. Today I'm covering the Miami zombie. This was the nickname given to Rudy Eugene, a man who, well, I don't want to spoil the story so soon, he did some zombie-ish things. But before we jump into the case, what exactly is a zombie? The word zombie traces back to Haitian folklore. It was thought that the dead were reanimated using the West African religion of voodoo. A concoction was made using herbs, ground-up bones, and animal parts, including a neurotoxin found in the pufferfish. When a person ingested the, quote, zombie powder, they would experience mental confusion, respiratory problems, and difficulty walking. It could potentially lead to a coma. The person was presumed dead and then would rise again as a zombie. The zombies we're used to these days aren't transformed using voodoo. It's typically due to something like a virus, a parasite, or radiation exposure. It wasn't until the Night of the Living Dead in 1968 that zombies became such a huge part of pop culture. Following that film was Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, World War Z, and hit TV shows like The Walking Dead. The zombies depicted in these movies have pale, decaying skin, slow robotic movements, and their main goal is to consume human flesh. They can't speak, unless you count the moaning and groaning. They're just hollow shells with an insatiable appetite. The reason I'm teaching Zombie 101 is because I want you to see the similarities of Rudy Eugene's actions to that of a zombie. I'll start with a little background on Rudy. He was born in Miami, Florida on February 4th, 1981. His parents were Haitian immigrants, which I think is just a coincidence. I'm not suggesting any Haitian zombie voodoo is to blame here. Not long after Rudy was born, they divorced. Rudy's dad was no longer in the picture and passed away when he was just six years old. He had no memory of him. Through his adolescence, he attended service at the Baptist church every Sunday with his mother. He stopped attending in his teen years, but he still read his Bible and prayed every night. Rudy had his first run-in with the law, being charged with assault when he was 16 years old. He did graduate high school, but chose not to further his education. His mother really wanted him to get into the healthcare field. She pushed him to continue his schooling and do something with his life. This always led to a fight because she would call him a bum. In his early 20s, his own mother filed assault charges against him after he had a meltdown in their family home. He shoved her around, broke the kitchen table, and smashed glasses. But this isn't the part that concerned her. His mother, Ruth, reported to police that Rudy looked her in the eyes and said, quote, I'll put a gun to your head and kill you. And she believed him. When police arrived, he did not follow their orders. He talked back, saying, What you gonna do? Shock me? I'll kick your ass. Why people do that is beyond me. It won't end well. He was indeed shocked, hit with a taser gun three times before finally going down. On the way to the police station, Rudy apologized to the officer for reacting the way he did. He explained that his mother was condescending, and it just made him so angry. That was his last assault charge. He continued to break probation and rack up other charges related to marijuana. When he was 24, Rudy married a woman named Jenny Ductant. The marriage was short-lived, though. Jenny divorced Rudy after 18 months because he was violent. Rudy did what he could to make money. Odd jobs, like selling CDs for cash working at McDonald's, and at the time of the attack, he was washing cars at a dealership. He actually liked his job at the car dealership, and he planned to open his own car wash business. May 26, 2012. I'm going to walk you through the timeline as to what was documented of Rudy via security cameras. An annual hip-hop festival is held Memorial Day weekend in Miami Beach every year. It's called Urban Beach Week. 
On this day, Rudy was alone driving to Miami Beach in his purple Chevy Caprice. Around 11.30 a.m., his car broke down. Rudy could be seen getting in and out of his car over the span of 30 minutes. Then he started walking. He walked across the busy six-lane MacArthur Causeway towards Miami Beach. The causeway is a three-mile stretch. After spending some time at the beach, he began stripping. First his shirt, then his pants, shoes, socks, and underwear. Yep, that's everything. The man is now completely naked, clutching a Bible and wandering around Miami. Around 1.55 p.m., he saw a homeless man, 65-year-old Ronald Popo, sitting beneath the railroad tracks. By this time, he had misplaced his Bible, and he accused Ronald of taking it. Ronald was just minding his own business when Rudy came running at him. He beat Ronald unconscious and for some reason took off his pants too. Then Rudy grabbed Ronald's head and began biting him. He chewed off 75% of his face, including one of his eyeballs. The only thing left was his beard. You guys, I made the mistake of clicking on the photo album labeled very graphic in all caps on Murderpedia. I knew it was going to be horrible, but it was much, much worse than I expected. The image is forever seared in my brain. I don't dare post them, but if you are feeling brave and want to see Ronald Popo's face before the attack and after, plus his process of surgical procedures, the link is in the show notes. The attack on Ronald lasted 18 minutes. Larry Vega was on a bike ride and witnessed the scene unfold. He called the police and they were quick to respond. Officer Jose Ramirez of the Miami Police Department arrived within minutes. He ordered Rudy to stop. His requests were completely ignored. Rudy just growled in response and continued chewing the face of Ronald Popo. Officer Ramirez was left with no choice but to fire a shot at Rudy, but he just kept going. The shot didn't slow him down at all. He fired four more times. Rudy was pronounced dead at the scene. The whole thing was caught on camera. The aftermath was a scary sight. Rudy lies dead, completely naked, face down on the cement. Next to him was Ronald, with no pants and no face, both bleeding profusely. Ronald was rushed to Jackson Memorial Hospital. He had lost one eye and is now permanently blind in the other. As you can imagine, this attack left Ronald extremely disfigured. He underwent many facial reconstruction and skin grafting procedures. Remember, the man was homeless. To pay for his surgeries, a fundraiser collected over $100,000. But unfortunately, with the cost of health care, I doubt that even came close to covering it. Now, what could have caused Rudy to act this way? His girlfriend, Rakia Cross, was with him earlier that morning, and when interviewed, she said he appeared completely normal and was shocked to hear what he had done. Rudy did smoke some weed, but he did not take any other drugs to her knowledge. He was headed to a hip-hop festival, so smoking weed is not a shocking revelation. One thing I can tell you is this is not a case of reefer madness. No matter how stoned you are, I don't think you would strip naked and cannibalize a man on the side of the road. You're more likely to zonk out on the couch and consume an entire bag of Cheetos. Something else had to be the cause. Rakia told police, quote, Somebody did something to him. Somebody put something on him. I know for sure that wasn't Rudy. She believed it was something supernatural. At the time, there was a new synthetic drug on the rise. It was created in a home lab like meth. Small white or brown crystals that are most commonly referred to as bath salts. But it's much more dangerous than your typical Epsom soaking salts. It was made to be a cheaper alternative to molly or ecstasy. Super cheap, like a few bucks. In fact, it does have the nickname $5 Insanity. You can swallow it, snort it, or melt it down and inject it for those without patience. According to teens.drugabuse.gov, bath salts can temporarily produce feelings of joy and increase social interaction, including an increased sex drive. 
but they can also cause paranoia, nervousness, and hallucinations. Some people experience what's called excited delirium. Basically, they lose their sense of reality and become excessively violent. Physical side effects include dehydration, the breakdown of muscle tissue from the bone, and kidney failure. You can experience hyperthermia due to rising body temperatures reaching 105 degrees. People are described as having superhuman strength while high on bath salts. It's the state of euphoria topped with a rush of adrenaline. Rudy's violent psychotic episode was assumed to be related to the new drug, but a talk screen showed only marijuana present in his system. One of my sources stated that because this designer drug was so new, there wasn't an accurate way to test for it yet. Just listen to the other cases of people high on bath salts, all of which were from Florida, I might add. A man took off his clothes and ran through a busy intersection in Fort Lauderdale. He could be seen on video running from an imaginary attacker. Another man, also naked, attempted to have sex with a tree. When police came, they tried to subdue him with a stun gun. But he went apeshit. He tore the stun gun probes off his body and announced that he was Thor, as in the mythical god with the hammer. He snatched a policeman's badge from his chest and tried to stab him with it. There have been other instances reported of people violently biting one another. What happened to Rudy definitely showed resemblance to the behavior of these other men high on bath salts. Plus, they found five empty water bottles inside his abandoned car. Remember, severe dehydration was listed as a common side effect. Could it have just been a psychotic break? Yes, Could he have been possessed by a demon? I guess. But given the popularity of bath salts and the symptoms, I'm putting my money on bath salts. Unfortunately, it has never been confirmed exactly what happened to Rudy. He has been labeled the Miami zombie or the Causeway cannibal. But the thing is, he didn't actually eat Ronald's face. He just aggressively gnawed the tissue off and threw it aside. I wanted to talk more about the victim, Ronald Popo. Yes, he survived the attack, but he is permanently scarred, both emotionally and physically. Ronald was born May 17, 1947, in Brooklyn, New York. He attended an uppity high school in Manhattan. After graduation, he attended college, but he wouldn't finish, dropping out in 1966. I'm not sure what caused the drastic change in his life, but within 10 years, he went from living in upscale Manhattan to being homeless living under a bridge. Obviously, at some point, he left New York and moved to Miami, Florida. The Miami Homeless Assistance Program helps provide people with shelter. They also assist in the training and hiring process to get people back on their feet. May 24th, 2012, The Homeless Assistance Program approached Ronald Popo. They offered to help him, but he kindly declined. He's been homeless for 46 years now. It's his way of life. The sad thing is, this was just two days before the attack. It's definitely a shoulda, coulda, woulda situation, but if he would have accepted their offer, he could have avoided Rudy Eugene's vicious assault. Ronald survived, but Rudy did not. His mother, Ruth Charles, took charge of the funeral arrangements. She wasn't able to find a Haitian church willing to work with her. Four different churches denied her the use of the building for his service. She ended up holding it in the chapel of a funeral home. Even though the whole country only knew Rudy as the Miami zombie, he had many friends who said he was a good guy and didn't understand what happened that day. Victoria Fort said, The Rudy we knew was a nice gentleman with a warm smile and funny. Former roommate Erica Smith said, He had his ups and downs, but he was not an aggressive person. He was really sweet and giving. Following Rudy's death, Ruth continued to hear whispers everywhere she went. While getting a manicure, she overheard two other women talking about what happened. They said it was definitely voodoo. Rudy's parents were from Haiti and were both mambos, which is a priest or a priestess within the voodoo religion. The whole thing was obviously a bullshit rumor. 
Rudy's father was dead, and neither of them were a mambo or even practiced voodoo. But that didn't make the rumors any easier to hear. I would love to hear your theories on what you think caused Rudy to become so violent. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and leave your comments here. Otherwise, you can find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Killer Stories Podcast, and you can find me on Twitter at Killer Stories PC. My email is killerstoriespodcast at gmail.com. You can send these story suggestions there. I'll be getting back to my listener recommendations starting next week. You can also contact me for any inquiries to sponsor an episode of Killer Stories. I have a fun bonus episode that will air on October 31st. You won't want to miss it. I hope you all have a great Halloween. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, this has been a killer story. (laughs) 